Hello, everybody. Okay, sit down, boy. Down. Get down. Get down. Hi, it's me, <coughs> Rodgon. I am here with my puppy mustache. And I seem to have not brought a pen with me. Okay, this one right? Yeah, that one writes. Cool. Hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I love drawing in my sketchbook, but you know what I love more? I love teaching you guys how to draw. I love giving you guys tips. I love giving you guys advice. I love giving you guys little things that you guys can use to tip your drawings to the next level. And Lately, I have been on a story kick. So it's been more like uh, inkling more and more towards me making my own story. And, you know, I'm trying to like find the name for what the comic would be if I did make a life comic. And I think it's uh, either life of an artist or life of a starving artist or life as a starving artist. That would be like, uh, that would be a good one. So... Anyways, lately I have been working a lot about, uh, with anatomy and trying to learn how to connect the body parts, right? So I do these sorts of drawings for myself. This is not for any project. This is not for anything. This is just for me. So a lot of the times I constantly find myself taking notes of the things that I'm doing, right? I'm constantly taking notes of the things that I might not understand, the things that I might need to establish a little bit better. And whenever I don't know something, I make a note of that. When things get complicated, I always resort back to levels. And levels just means that you have a, a different level of uh, a finish for your designs, right? For example, level one for legs would be just a simple sushi. Okay, level two would be maybe taking that and doubling it up so you have twice as many limbs. Level three would be more with a little bit more anatomy, so maybe a little bit more lumps. And then so on and so on and so on forth until you get to a final result. That is exactly what you want to do. Now, the level of ranges which you might be have access to might be a lot different than the ones that other people do. Because... Things like anatomy and perspective and doing all that stuff normally takes a while to learn. It's not something that is intuitive and it's not something that's incredibly simple. But it does have a science to it and there is a certain way that you can learn how to establish these things a lot easier. And that is what I do and that's what I aim to teach you guys. And that's uh, a lovely, lovely, lovely thing because I get to enjoy seeing you guys light up every time you guys learn something new. And it's really cool. <clears throat> so, what topic do you guys want to learn today? <coughs> do you guys want to learn how to draw characters? Do you guys want to learn how to draw a certain body part? Do you guys want to learn how to draw stories? Do you guys want to just talk and shoot the bullshit? What is it that you guys would like to do today? I'm normally very accommodating and I like making sure that my followers feel like they're getting something that they want. Lips. Lips sounds good. Characters. <clears throat> the face, the eye, lips. So that's two for characters, two for lips. Two for characters, two for lips. All right, what it's going to be is going to be bid auction style. Neck attachments, ooh, no, we haven't seen a double of that. Expressions, ooh, okay. Oh, 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 come on. We need to see poses, oh. Characters, that's three for characters. Lips, lips, oh my God, that's four for lips. Oh, lips takes the lead, takes the lead. Mouth expressions are part of lips. Lips take the lead. Characters, oh, catching up for, oh, there's seven, oh, no, my lips expressions. Oh, they're tied back together, tied again. Oh, nine to nine, 10 to nine. Oh, characters. Characters and lips, okay, cool. How about we draw characters with lips? Deal? 
So how about we just combine both of them and we combine the act of drawing a character, <clears throat> but not just giving a character like a mouth. Now let's talk about lips. Let's talk about lips. <coughs> Ooh, we can make poles. Yeah, let's talk about lips because lips are not very well understood. And then we even talk about like uh, the character design aspects of characters surrounding lips. How about that? We can totally do that. That sounds like a perfectly like decent lesson for today. So the first thing that we have to talk about if we're going to be talking about lips is going to be the shape of the mouth. And the shape of the mouth falls on the underside of the actual skull and it comprises of a couple elements. It comprises of your teeth, bottom teeth, your chin, your cheekbone, and your jaw structure. Okay, so your mouth plays a role in all of these sections of your anatomy. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> All this can be simplified really easy. This kind of looks like a teardrop. If you draw a triangle at the top of that teardrop, you get yourself your nose canal. And then you can just draw noses really easy. This is your teeth line, right? So this curves, this is curving. This is just a representation of that. So if this is just your teeth, your mouth goes around your teeth. So you draw an opening around your teeth. And whatever you don't want your teeth to be becomes a negative space. So you don't have to have a full open mouth at all. At all, you don't have to have your mouth extended all the way there. Your teeth are always going to be there. Okay? So your teeth are always going to be right there. Beep, 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 beep. So all you got to do is draw the opening that you feel like showing. So that's kind of cool, huh? So knowing that that alone just makes it really easy to draw teeth, do, 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 and then draw a mouth around it. So you have the ability to change that mouth in a bunch of different ways, and the whole head system would look like this. So you draw a little teardrop, a little circle on top of the triangle, and then that triangle gives you the guidelines. This becomes your teeth. And then you draw your mouth around your teeth. Okay, kind of looks like Spider-Man pulling up his mask. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So if you think about it like that, it's kind of easy. Okay, so circle for your ears, eye socket circle that's a little bit wider for the side of your face this side it's wider because your brain is there you need space for your brain so just remember that if you want to draw a character this like this perfect that's perfectly fine but you need space for your brain okay if you don't leave space for your brain it's gonna look weird But if you always leave space for the brain, it doesn't matter what size you make the head. Okay? <clears throat> you can make a head that's this skinny. As long as you space it out right, you can have it be perfectly functional. Okay? And the same thing goes the other way. If you just space things out, you can draw heads from any, any, any shape. You don't have to be constrained to the bullshit like this. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have to. I mean, it's an easy way to divide it, I guess. But this, doing this, is what fucked me up for years. 
not understanding the volume, not understanding what the body parts did, the limitations of the body parts, all that stuff. When I do that, it didn't give me that. But if I drew a little teardrop, it did. I don't know why, but that, that representation was all the world of difference to me. You know, just like, it just made sense. So now that we understand a little bit more about the mouth, let's do a couple of examples of mouths and then we'll move on to lips. So the actual mouth itself, again, is going to come from a little teardrop in the front of your face. And at the top of that teardrop, there's going to be a little triangle, right? Here, this is going to be your teeth line. And then from there you're going to draw your mouth either around it or on top of it. Your actual mouth works very similar to what an eyeball does, okay? Normally, you have a whole eyeball, right? And then you have eyelids that cover and show you a little bit of the back. You're going to do the same thing with the mouth. You're going to do a long line that overlaps a bottom line, then you're going to have yourself a mouth. One long line, one overlapping line, and negative space provide you a very simple mouth. And you can do that in any single type of style. You can Make the little M if you want to make the little curvature of your lip. If your lip has that, if it doesn't have that, you don't need that. But that's all you really need to draw yourself a simple mouth. Okay? One long line, one overlapping line, and make sure that the top line overlaps a little bit. That is the easiest way to learn how to draw mouths. And but, but understanding the concept of that it wraps around your teeth, that is what makes it cement and stone. So if you have your teeth from a teardrop and now it's just two lines that go over it, well, now you can move them around a lot more. The edges of the mouth will connect back to where the nose is, giving you access to those side muscles. So the edges of your mouth connect there, and then that goes to your chin. So that is essentially what's happening with that area of your face. Again, let's do it again. Circle for a head, middle line, triangle. Triangle gives me my teardrop. The triangle also go if you're going up, you go and you create a little infinity sign, you give yourself your eye sockets, and then you can just draw a circle towards the end of your head. This is a really big jaw, by the way. Normal jaw would be right, right here. But let's make it big, just why not? If this is my teeth, so I'm going to draw my teeth on there. Boop, 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 boop. And then I'm going to draw my mouth going around it. My mouth is going to have to touch one side that's around this teardrop, Around, So you have to think about this as like a, a circular object, okay? So you're going to be behind here to here. And it normally is where the middle of the eye is. If you see where the middle of the eye is, that's where the curvature is going to go. So from here, I have to go around and then back this way. So I go around and back that way. Then intersecting line. To close off my mouth. In this case, this person looks like they're like protruding their lip up a little bit, like Rrr. like a very Jim Carrey-ish expression. My nose is gonna come from the top and the bottom of this triangle and just connecting back there. The edge of my mouth is gonna connect back to the side of my triangle. And then the bottom of my chin connects to the bottom, uh, the middle of this little circle, whatever area you set for the side of your face. That's where your ear goes. The bottom of your ear connects your chin. 
So that is essentially how maths work. So one curvy line, one intersecting line, and now you have yourself access to a bunch of mouths in a bunch of different ways. A triangle will give you access to the rest of the face by connecting the edges of the mouth and going up to your desired amount of space for your eyes. And just from a triangle, that's just a triangle. That's like nothing special. You're not like doing like some special lines or like angles. You're just following the lines of a triangle. That's what the beauty of that is. <laughs> So, so if you want somebody that's an adult, make that triangle long. If you want a baby, make that triangle little. And now you have yourself different characters, aka character design. Ha ha ha! See, I told you we we're gonna touch on all the topics. So if you want a character that has a strong jaw. Start with a little triangle. Um, not a little triangle stays the same, kind of, but start with a little bit of a teardrop. If you want it longer, make it longer. The mask method. Oh, yeah, the mask method was the very first iteration of all this stuff. Uh, you guys want to know it? So the mask method was the concept of drawing a little beanbag at the front of a shape. So if you drew a beanbag in the front of the shape, it gave you your eyebrow line, it gave you your cheekbones, and it gave you a midline that have a little indentation, which is the spacing for your nose and your nose bridge. From there, from the edge of the mask to the side of the face, you would draw a sh just a circle again, and you'd have a general uh, consensus for your head. You can also do the teardrop from there. And to get yourself a whole head. It's a very, it was the very first iteration of the triangle method. This was the first iteration of the triangle method. Um, it didn't have a very much completed like motion to it, but it's a very effective way of seeing faces. I did it for years. This is the way that I drew faces for years, for like 10 years. How to do good plus size models. Learn anatomy. Learn anatomy so that you don't have to worry about thinking about that. What do I mean by that, right? Well, you can draw a person that's skinny or fat, depending on how you work their anatomy. Because we don't grow bones. Our bones don't get bigger, okay? Our bones don't get bigger. We just get bigger with our fat tissue and body structure. So a person that's skinny is going to have a very much close connection to their bodies. So they're going to be a little bit more, um, their skin tissue and their ribs and stuff like that, their bones are going to pop out a little bit. But a person that's more chubby, they have the same structure. They just have fatty tissue on top of that structure. which creates overlapping lines and more volume. So instead of having little volume, you have more volume on top of that structure. Okay? And that's how you distinguish between that. So you learn the very basics. You learn the very basics of anatomy, like the hip bone and the rib cage and the collarbone. And then from there, you can make your own characters based on the type of styling you feel like having. Okay? If you want a more chubby character, just add more volume. If you want a skinnier one, just keep it at less volume. But now you have the structure and you can move it around and you can understand it. And if you're trying to just understand really quickly how to draw someone a little chubbier, then do this. When you're drawing them, don't draw the chin. Mm. 
If, if you want just a nice little quick tip, just don't draw the chin. Give him like a double chin. <laughs> okay? And then make like their clothing not fit like that. And that's like a very iconic way to make somebody not look, like look a little chunkier. Make all their features a little smaller so that their features look bigger. And the more you do that, the more chunky or the chubbier they're going to look. And you can do this infinitely. Okay? You can make the head infinitely smaller and make somebody infinitely bigger. So it's just a matter of you wanting to design something and not thinking like you're going to offend someone. Like if this was like a character from like, I don't know, from like your D&D campaign and you were like making someone that turned into a worm. You know, like that would be like a super fun thing to learn this for. Or you want to like make someone look like Jabba the Hutt. So, okay, so let's continue down, and we haven't finished our lip, our mouth lesson. So, that's how you make chubby people. Let's go back to mouths, okay? So, mouths, we talked about it, and it's two curvy lines, right? It's one curvy line going one way, one curvy line going the other that wrap around teeth. That's essentially what our mouths are. Our teeth are behind it most of the time. And then it's an opening in which the upper lip is going to always overlap a little bit. And then the lower lip is going to connect to the same place, but it overlaps. So essentially, your, your mouth is kind of like a ribbon. Here, let's go on to the next slide. Your mouth is like a ribbon. Your mouth does not connect at one point and one point and then call it like that. This is not how your mouth works. It might look like that, it might look like that, but that's the reason if you see it like that, that's probably why it looks a little bit flat for you. The moment that you realize that the upper lip just needs to overlap a little bit to create a level of depth, that starts giving you more like a lip feeling, right? Then if we start adding volume up from there, from the edges and taper it, This starts looking like a lip. Guess what? If you do the same thing from this point, but you leave that overlapping line, then you can do the same thing for the bottom lip from that same point. That overlapping line is everything for lips. Lips are also going to be segmented into a couple parts. So if you want to add more volume, you have to remember that they're like little pillows. Okay, there's two little pillows on each side of your lips, and then there's two little pillows on the side right here. Okay, sometimes these have a little bit of the middle, but most of the time they don't. Most of the time it's just two little pillows on top and two little pillows on the bottom. You overlap the top line, you intersect the bottom one, and you have yourself a very good understanding of lips. Now this is where you would add your color and your... Right? And a lot of the times, you don't even want to add lines for them. So you would add your curvy line, your... Bottom intersecting line, add some negative space, add a slight detail for a lip, and then just add color. So it's not a harsh line. And then just like that, you have yourself a nice little indication of lips and mouths that you can continue doing in any shape that has two intersecting lines.
right? As long as you connect this and you taper the bottom one, and then from there you also taper that one going up, you taper it from that area. And it's gonna look a lot better. From a profile, what is half of this? When you're thinking about profile, always take your front view and split it in half, and then you end up having a very, very generalized way to draw a profile. Okay, so if we draw the whole mouth and we draw the lips and we split it in half, that is how we draw profiles. So it's not overly hard. It's just normally not explained very easily. Mm -mm. Now let's put the whole thing together. The triangle, the teeth, curvy line number one, curvy line number two, negative space, because that's where my teeth end. And then from there, I'm going to draw my lips and my bottom. The teeth that show are going to be the teeth that show. And then going up, I get to my nose. It's kind of cool, huh? It's kind of cool when you don't have to guess too much. Now, how would you draw like different teeth? We'll talk about teeth in a second. But like once you get to this level, right? Just learning the intersecting lines. From there, anything you draw inside, it's really going to be up to just your imagination. You can draw anything you want inside of here. Because essentially what you're doing is you're just making a little opening. right? If you understand anatomy to a very, very rudimentary extent, which is what I teach to this extent. you know, I teach you guys how to be able to do this. Hey, Wes, didn't see you on this morning, man. So I just jumped on. Do, do, do. All right, so if you guys learn how to draw basic anatomy, which is this, okay? Draw a circle, draw a midline by drawing a circle inside. This gives you the front of your face. That's where you draw your triangle. And then the back of your head is going to be where your spine goes. That's going to be important later, okay? Because for a spine, if you want to connect your body, you just draw a circle at the bottom of your head, and then you draw a circle for the collarbone, and then you connect it. And then you have yourself the connecting points. But that's for another lesson or for another day. Because that opens you up for the rest of your body. And the rest of your body is as easy as connecting a couple different points. <laughs> there is a, there's a connect the dots that actually works. And it's, uh, I've been developing it. And it's really cool. It shall be explained in my how to draw book if I ever get a chance to finish it. You make that regular smegular pen look so crispy. I like that. I like that. That sounds cool. Making something sound like look crispy. Midline, triangle, teardrop, eye socket, eye socket. This is your nose bridge. Whatever nose you choose, it will just connect back to that triangle, okay? So it can be a little one. It could be a big one. Could, whatever you feel like drawing nose wise, it just goes back in, in and out of that hole. So it, it keeps you comfortable knowing that you can modify it any way you want within that space okay that does look like squidward like you just have to make that bigger um yeah that essentially squidward it's not a bad way of seeing it it's a happy squidward 
kind of looks like a Muppet, too. <laughs> but anyways. Midline, triangle, teardrop, circle, circle from that triangle. There's no guessing here, okay? No guessing at all. You go as high up as you want, depending on the style or where you want your eyebrows, okay? The way that I normally measure this is like this. If I start with my circle, those are going to be two parts, okay? That's going to be uh, where the edge of my eyebrows are going to go. So that's what the end of that circle is. That's the edge of my eyebrows. And then here it's my forehead and my hairline. So if I divide the basic shape at first in just two, I know that most of my circles and stuff like that in my triangle is going to go on the bottom part. Okay? And then I need to add a third part because the head is made out of three parts. So I just need to make sure that that third part is at adage depending on the styling of the character that I want. Maybe I want a big hulky character. Maybe I want a little baby. Okay? Maybe I want somebody massive. Maybe I want somebody that has like gigantic jaw structures. or anything in between. See how versatile that is? Start with the parts that don't move, AKA the structure of the parts that don't move, and then add the parts that do, AKA the jaw, so that you can add any sort of like facial expressions and have them be accurate. So start with parts one and two, and then you move on to area three. You don't even need the jaw to connect the head. Like, if you draw your circle, right, and you just draw this upper part, your ears are what connects your head to your neck. So if you just draw up to here, and then from here, you draw your line down to a, a circle or a compass. I like a compass. So you have yourself access to your neck. You don't need your jaw. Your jaw has nothing to do with your neck until you start looking at the underside right here. Okay? So you can draw your whole head like this, and then later on, whenever you feel like drawing, again, if you want to make a little baby head, if you want to make like an anime head, if you want to make a superhero head, Adjust it accordingly, draw your teardrop, and then you have yourself access to the spacing you need for your characters. Your ear connects to the middle of your collarbone, which is the middle of that compass, and then you start going the, from there. So you don't even need, <laughs> you don't need your jaw at all to connect your stuff. You just need to know where your ears are. And then your jaw comes later. So if you're struggling with the neck, <laughs> that's one way that you can see it. Another way I like to see it is just to draw your spine first then draw a circle for the bottom of your head, a circle for the connecting of your neck, and then draw your volume. Boom. Split this circle somewhere in half and you have access to both of your ears. From there, the bottom of your ear to the middle of your collarbone. Boom. Knowledge, triangle, teardrop, circle, circle. Oh. Oh, ah, oh, lovely, it's so good. No guessing, nothing, no guess, one curvy line, bottom curvy line, intersecting, boom. Same thing for the eyes. <laughs> Again, there's no guessing. There's no guessing involved. Like when when somebody's like, well, you're gonna do this, and then you're you're gonna you're gonna do this, and you kind of have to like you know eyeball it. I'm like, shut up. Like you don't know how to teach something if you're eyeballing crap, okay? And then some techniques like the Loomis method are, are really 
awesome concept, but they're really difficult to explain, especially when someone doesn't know how to move arches in space. But once you understand this, all you got to do is do that to complete the Loomis method. <laughs> if you wanted to do it on my own, like on top of the method that I do, like all you have to do is connect the ear to this. Boom. <laughs> the ear to here. Boom. Ooh, look. It's all cool and stuff now. Ooh. <laughs> Ah, uh, I love my job. <laughs> I love my job so much. What I love doing the most, though, is helping you guys unlock the, your potential. Okay? Teaching you guys that simple shapes can guide you if you understand, not understand anything special. I just look at people. Okay? I just look at people, and that's what teaches me the little things that allow me, this is half, half, at an angle, ear towards the back, little minuscule things. This is just a curvature. A curvature, lead, oh, let me explain why this curves. Maybe that way it helps, okay? So this curves, the, the hilt right here is normally going to line up with your teeth. Why? Because your teeth hang on your jaw structure. Your teeth are here. This is your teeth line. This is where your teeth go. This is your molars and your cheekbone. Right? So this is where your teeth go. So this curvature doesn't do this. It doesn't do that at all. Like Unless you're a robot, it doesn't do that. Okay? It's this, because it's a bone. It's a bone that's curving up that has your molars and your teeth, okay? And it has a bunch of muscles connected to it. So there's a kind of like a weird connection point from here to here, like that. So if you always think of yourself like you have goggles, right? If you always think that you have goggles and you make it look like, think like you have goggles, you have access to understanding. You have a missing part right there. If you have problems knowing the difference between drawing your eyes too big, right? And then not leaving enough space in between your eyes and your ears. This is fixed by understanding two things. First of all, most of your features fall within the first fourth of your face. Okay? That's it. Like, that's, that fixes most of it. Just understanding that most of your features fall within the first fourth of your face. Second, your ear isn't completely flat up and down. It's a slight angle. That's what fixes this whole issue with the ear, with the jaw. Because if you have it like this, you need to curve it with a slight sharp right to be able to get there. But if it's a slight curve, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Next, your spine is in the back of your head, and that's what connects to your body. The distance that you choose for here, draw that same distance, the connecting to the head, and then taper this depending on your level of fitness that you want. Okay? So it's the same size... From your spine. Your spine is in the back. The distance from here to here is the same distance from here to here. Taper this. If you feel like making a different character, let's say like, I don't know, like the Hulk or something, make this bigger. The bottom one bigger and you have access to a bigger neck. It is not Science. Most of the time, the volume goes to the front. It doesn't grow both ways. Your spine is always going to be very much so the back of your body. Okay? Your spine 
you might have a little bit of volume from, like a, you know, like your traps and stuff like that, a little bit. But most of the volume is going to go to the front. Same thing with your rib cage. Okay, most of the volume is going to go in front. So if you have really large pecs, guess where the volume goes? It goes forward. It doesn't go magically back or anything like that. Everything goes forward from your skeleton. And from the sides, if you have your lats, they grow towards the side of your ribcage. Your arms, again, they grow out to the side of your ribcage. A lot of the volume will sometimes block features that you have from the other side. You have to learn to be okay with that. That takes a long time to get used to and like getting like used to that shit sucks. Like just learning how to draw through your shapes is one of the hardest parts to do. So what I'm doing looks easy, but visually it's a pain in the ass for most people to do. Okay. I make it look easy because I just do this all the time. Okay. So me overlapping shapes, whatever, that's just the thing that I do every day. A lot of you guys will have the uh, inkling to want to get really good really quickly, and it's going to take a little bit of time, okay? And remember, I'm doing this with pen, too, so it's not like I'm just trying to flex on you guys. I just want to get better myself. Later on, you guys will understand that the compass and those ways of thinking just lead you to understanding that the head is a cylinder, so if you draw cylinders at the top of your compasses, you end up with a proportioned head. If you draw an egg for the rib cage and a ball for your hip bones, you have access to a whole body. Incredibly simple. Like, no, I'm not really kidding. This is really simple. <laughs> and it's dynamic because it's based on actual anatomy. So when you want to move something, all you need is one endpoint and your connecting point. Move the endpoint, move the connecting point. Okay? You already have an endpoint. Move the endpoint. Move the connecting point. It's going to be a lot of pivoting parts and understanding how and how much your actual body can move. And that is going to come through observation. Then, after you understand placement, that is when you start adding anything like musculature. And then on top of that, you would add things like clothing. Style comes into play here, too, depending on how you want to stylize your character. What? Do you want to make it anatomically correct? Or do you want to make it really stylish and pa 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 Like Bruce Timmish. Or maybe you just want to leave it like a noodle. It's perfectly fine, too. Perfectly valid. You don't have to add more detail than that. But that's essentially, you know, like, that's just how you start learning and learning to simplify things. And sometimes you have to unlearn things. Sometimes you have to unlearn what other people have taught you and what you've thought forever to get a fresh start and understand that it's not all that complicated. It can start from a triangle and then go from there, depending on what you want to create. Yeah. Let's draw an old person that requires big cheeks and a little tiny part in the mouth. Like a, almost like sagging, like. <laughs> Combining elements. And looking at references will help you immensely in your journey. Okay? So uh, teaching you guys how to draw from memory is one thing, but you need that memory to be able to draw from. So you can't draw things that you don't 
have ever spent the time to draw before. So you need to get with some doodles from like Pinterest and stuff like that so that you can get better. <laughs> Wait, someone's tagging me. What's up? Natalia Sanji. Uh, funny seeing the shapes in real life when you start looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you guys start looking at people, start focusing on this. Okay, this is going to help you guys out a lot. When you start looking at people, focus on the top of their nose where their eyes go, right? How far away from there, what type of triangle do they have? That triangle is going to lead to the side of their nose. So if they have a really wide nose, it would be a really wide triangle. Okay, then that triangle, you're going to look up from there. And then you're going to see what spacing there is between their eyebrows. So if their eyebrows are really spread out, you would draw the triangle piece going to there. If they're really close together, you would narrow that down. It kind of looks like a little hourglass. Okay? You have that triangle that gives you access to your nose. And then that hourglass atop is the spacing in between your eyebrows. So find that little hourglass and you have access to understanding that first section. Wherever your eyebrows end, that is going to be two awesome points. So that's why it's important to understand where they go, right? If you draw them floating, if you're like a person that just draws floating eyebrows because you don't like use your eye sockets or your anatomy, okay? So you're like, yay, type of person. This is going to make it a lot more difficult for you to understand how to map your heads right because you need to understand where your eyebrow lays in your actual anatomy to be able to understand uh, concepts like this. So you can keep doing that, but you have to understand that this is where they go. You need to understand the proper placement and then you can modify it and like stylize it all you want. But you need that because it's going to provide you the areas for shadows. It's going to provide you the spacing for your eyes. It's going to provide you the spacing for the side of your head, your cheekbones, all that stuff. So it's easy to, um, to get lost in style when we want to get accurate. So accuracy first, style second. So go up. That hourglass is going to give you access to where your nose is and where your eyebrows are going to go. The side of your eyebrow is going to be the side of your head. That is where your temple starts. Sometimes I like to use this shape, especially from frontal shots, to draw where the ear is and then double the size of that spacing to give myself a little bit of brain space. Okay, so unless I'm going with an actual shape I already drew, if I'm already just drawing a character, I'm not going to worry about the whole structure in the back yet. I just like to draw my character starting off. And then whenever I get to the side, if I need it to be a little bit more three quarters, then I add a little bit space, which is equal to about double this. Double whatever the size is, and then draw your ear towards the back. You end up in a situation where it gives you a nice little indication where your neck is going to come, because that's the bottom of your ear already, which is kind of cool. Sometimes you just need to find the other ear and you got to draw through your shape sometimes to be able to find it. And you can find this side exactly the same as this. Draw a circle coming from your temple. Divide that in half. You have your ear right here. From there, go down to a little circle or a compass and you have access to your neck. If you want it thinner, you can taper this, okay? You can taper it infinitely. Depending on what type of character design you want to get, you can taper that a lot. So you don't have to stay with those real proportions. Okay, you can taper the shit out of it, but... Remember those mapping points so that if you need to move your character around, you won't have a hard time doing so. That's kind of cool, huh? Just understanding, like, 
drawing through your shape is one of the most important concepts you will ever learn. But a lot of people dismiss this over style and they dismiss it because they think perspective is boring. But unfortunately, perspective is one of the most fun things that you can do whenever you actually learn how to use it. And when you learn how to use it in non buildings and make you don't have to draw cars and stuff like that with it you never have to touch a single landscape just understanding perspective allows you the ability and flexibility to draw characters in a ton of different situations and the ability to draw accurately in situations where normally it would be a little hard i guess And I teach all these concepts and more. Yeah, everything can be found on my YouTube channel. So if you guys feel like want to learn more and you guys want to explore other things that I didn't touch up on today, you guys can go follow my YouTube channel and I have hundreds, hundreds of videos just like this, just as explainability. <laughs> How would you call it? Explainability. I have no idea. What, what would you call that? Like, what would you call it when somebody explains really good? Yeah, I'm cocky. I don't care. Shit. It's me and my puppy versus the world, man. You got to be a little cocky sometimes. I have problems with inspiration for poses. Pinterest. How to videos, I describe it as a detail. <laughs> okay, another cool tip. Okay, wherever your eyes are, that is normally going to be where that little dent is for your faces. Okay, it's going to be really close to that. Okay, and again, why? Because... If we start with a triangle, <laughs> this is the separation of your eyes and your forehead, or your nose and your nose canal. Okay, so the top of your nose, you can have different noses again. It doesn't have to be like that. You can have little curvatures, you can have broken nose bridges, you can have little curvatures down, whatever. But the actual concept itself, wherever your eye is, that is where that little indentation goes. Whenever you're drawing from profiles, wherever your eyes are, that is where that little dent goes. Okay? And that dent happens across the whole face. That's the nose bridge, that's your cheekbones. Okay, so that little dent that happens here is the same dent that happens for your eye socket. <laughs> Want to know another cool trick? Super cool trick? Okay, so take that dent, right? We just learned about the dent. So we're going to draw a little eye and we're going to draw a little dent. So that means that that's where our eye goes. So if we split the eye in half, you already have your guidelines for your eye. Just go from that midline, <laughs> go up to the edge, up to the edge, and you have yourself an eye <laughs> by finding that little leverage. <laughs> Yay, it's kind of cool. And then when you find your eyebrow, where you find wherever your eyebrow is, that's the side of your face. So you can just draw a circle towards the end of the face. Wherever your eyebrow is. Doesn't matter where that is. Why? Because that's where your eye socket goes around. Your eye socket wraps around where your eyebrow would be. And then at the edge of that, that's where it stops being curvy and it starts being flat. So 
that's how you can distinguish it really easy. Wherever your eyebrow is, that is the side of your face. And I like doing that with uh, when I'm drawing caricatures and stuff like that. I'll come up with the head really quickly. I will determine visually where this eyebrow is going to end. I like to draw a little line. I'm drawing normally with marker when I'm drawing caricatures, but what I'm doing, I'm distinguishing a side of my face, which is going to tell me where the eyebrow is going to go. From there, the rest of my head is going to be the side, and then this side, I just have to split this in half after that. Once I have that, I leave a little space for the eyebrow, and then I just draw it to the edge. From here, I can visually think of my eyebrows making a round shape towards the middle, which creates a little pocket, creating a triangle. Two circles connecting create a triangle. Okay. The thing is, whenever you're drawing, you have to leave the little space in the top because otherwise you don't leave space for your eyebrows. So that's the one caveat you have to remember and your nose bridge. So if you have a wider nose bridge, you need to leave space for your nose bridge. Okay. So sometimes you need a wider nose bridge for characters that have a wider nose. So that spacing changes. Okay, characters that don't have a really wide nose bridge will have a taper on that little hourglass that's heavier. So you just get used to that like eventually. Like at first you just have to remember to draw an hourglass, and then eventually you'll be like, oh well, I can change the hourglass to be different things. Remember, the hourglass gives you like Pretty much all the facial features. The middle of the hourglass gives you the eye section. The bottom of the hourglass gives you your nose. The top here gives you the entrance of your eyebrows. So whatever styling you choose to go with, men, women, comic book, simple, cartoony, whatever, it's going to be very... Pretty consistent. And then at the edge of whatever this is, that's where you draw a little circle to come up with the side of your head. From here to here, that's one, two. I need one more. So I draw my teardrop coming from my triangle to come up with the side of my head. From here, that's my cheekbone. Go around, connect the triangle. Cheekbone, cheekbone, chin, connect, connect. And then I choose my jaw. This is my teeth line. Two lines. One, two lines intersecting with each other. Making sure the top one overlaps first. Creates my lips or my mouth. And then the edge of my mouth up to the side of my triangle. Provide the rest of this little area so I can have some volume. Cool. Dope. <laughs> How do you draw a box? <laughs> well, a box has four sides. And then you double that and then connect the edges. You have yourself a cube. A box is going to need lips. So just draw a few lines coming out. And then draw some negative space by drawing a little bit darker lines inside. And now you have yourself a box. It could even be like a shipping box or something like that. Just draw little details. Or what kind of box were you thinking? What about five-point perspective? Hey, man. If you, if you learn three-point perspective and four-point perspective, five-point perspective, it's easy. So, so how about we worry about teaching the very basics? If you learn up to there, and I don't have time to explain one, two, three, and four-point perspective really quickly, but I have time to explain at least a couple. Let's see if I can do, go through them really quickly. So one-point perspective. 
One point equals you have a horizon line and you set a point and all your things are going to go there. So if you draw like a circle, your circle edges would go down that way. Boom. So everything goes down there, right? If you make it bigger, it's going to go down there. So that is one point perspective. One point perspective, all the edges of your elements go towards there and then you cap them. That's one point. Two points. Horizon line. You set two points. <laughs> right? You're going to do boxes by drawing a line. So you're essentially you're drawing the side of the building, just like the middle line, and then the edges go towards one point. The edges go to the other point. Boom, boom. You cap them wherever you want them, and then you can move this up and down to create buildings. Choo -choo -choo. Stuff like that. This is used a lot when it comes down to drawing landscapes, drawing elements in space, stuff like that. Cityscapes, architects use this a lot. Three points. Three point perspective involves now we're going to go up two. So we're going to have our horizon line, one, two, and then we're going to have a third point in the top or the bottom, depending on where you want to. Four-point perspective would have one on each. So this is going to explain one and four-point perspective. Three and four. Okay? So essentially, you're going to do very similar things. You're going to go up, and you're going to go down. So whenever you draw anything in space, you're going to end up mapping it to three points. And that ends up creating this sort of like, almost like a fisheye lens effect that happens in between these things. Right, So you end up in a situation where you, whenever you're connecting things, they start tapering towards the top and they start tapering towards the bottom very dramatically. So a lot of people use this for very cinematic things like, you know, castles, you know, things like reflections on the lake. Things like that. Like, so people use it in a very awesome, drastic ways that allow them to be able to use that to a maximum efficiency. So four-point perspective is that. It's just using all four sides. And then essentially it turns into more like a fisheye view. And then five-point perspective, I don't even know what five-point perspective is. But essentially, like, the thing is, you can have as many points into a thing. Right, Because not everything's going to fall within that. So you can have some things be one point perspective to that focal point. And then you can have something else that's completely different and it's just differently perspectivized. And then it might just be in a completely different area of the drawing. So it might call for very different situations. Sometimes you have something that requires a cityscape underneath. But you're looking at it from like a high point view. So you need to have many very different perspective points to be able to do that. So you can have five, six, seven, ten perspective points. But a lot of the times I hate drawing like this because it really doesn't really help when you are trying to draw something organically. What I like to do, instead of drawing like this with like horizon lines and shit like that, right? I don't like that. Eh. To me, that's boring. To me, I like to make maquettes. So I draw a little flat section, I make like a little grid, <laughs> and then I start drawing my characters on this. Like if it was like a D&D &D board or something like that. Right? Being able to draw something on a little board is going to be incredibly easy. And then when I feel like I'm ready, guess what I do? I crop it. <laughs> I just crop it to whatever I need, and I have a whole landscape that I didn't have to feel overwhelmed by doing the entirety. And I can fill in the rest of the little background elements and stuff like that, but I don't have to overwhelm myself with thinking massive perspective for the entirety of the world. I can just think of a little box 
give it a little depth so it feels like it's some sort of ground. And then from here, I can easily draw things like trees and stuff like that coming from there. I can draw bushes, I can draw pathways. You know, this is easy to work with. If I play with scale, I can actually have some pretty cool designs. Right? And then when it's time, let's see, he's like meeting Godzilla for the first time. And then when it's time, you just crop it, finish off the other elements, like little background elements and stuff like that. And you have yourself a scene. You don't have to make it super hard. <laughs> like, you really don't. It doesn't have to. You can think about it like a set. <laughs> if you need different perspectives, that box just changes. So if you want more overhead, that top box just goes like that. So you see a little bit more of the top. If you want a more horizontal perspective, get it closer to a side. So it's closer to just being flat. Right? doesn't have to be super complex. Again, it just it's normally just explained incredibly difficult. If you want to learn how to draw objects in space, start with your grid, right? So you draw a little box. And let's start with a character. Let's just draw a guy called Stan. Hi, Stan. How you doing? If I want something above Stan, I'm going to draw something above Stan, and then I'm going to duplicate it closer to him. Connect the edges. Now it's above him. If I duplicate it and give it more space, it's going to look like it's farther above of him. If I want something below Stan, I can draw something below Stan, get it closer to him by duplicating it, follow the lines, and I have something below Stan. It's actually quite simple to just use this methodology and do it. Whenever you're drawing things like circles, you can just draw a circle closer to him. If you make it smaller and then make it bigger, it's going to look like it's behind them, coming towards them. Small to big comes to you. Big to small goes away. Okay. And as long as you keep doing it towards him, it keeps all the information coming towards your character. Right? Essentially, you're doing the same thing that you do with a focal point, but you're doing it with your own dude. Yo, I'm new here. Can you draw a nose with a nose? A nose with a nose. Okay, so we're going to draw a nose. And then we're going to draw a nose with a nose. So do we draw the extra nose on top of the nose? Like a little, like, zit type of nose? Or would it be a nose with a nose in the case of, like, just drawing a nose, and then the other side is also a nose. Like a twin. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Oh, a nose ring. Oh, you just do that. So with a nose ring, you're going to draw a triangle to find your nose. You're going to draw your nostrils at an angle, and then you're going to go boop, boop. And then you're going to close the little wings. Uh, I don't think we have enough time for clothing, and it doesn't really fit into what we've been talking today. We have been talking about the mouth. We've been talking about the jaw structure. We've been talking about the neck. We've been talking a little bit about the actual anatomy of the face and uh, how to see the facial parts of the face a little bit better. So it doesn't, the clothing doesn't really play a part in that.
so if you guys have questions on this, yeah, I think if you guys can please, my mods, please uh, let people know where they can find me after and if they feel like uh, learning and following their education a little bit more. I do have entire galleries and entire video uh, collections of hundreds of videos, hundreds of very, very good informational videos, all free, completely free. Uh, so there's no excuse. So you guys, uh, you guys can go. <coughs> you guys can go learn today. You guys can go learn tomorrow. You guys can choose not to learn at all. Um, but there's no excuse for saying that there's no knowledge there for you. Okay, the knowledge is there. It's just a matter of you wanting to go get it or not. See how difference. Like the differences in men's, like it, you can change these in different ways and boom. <coughs> Try to be here all the time. Oh. Wait, wait, what? What? Oh, yeah, you guys can always donate for me. <laughs> like you guys can always show like your appreciation by buying my books and stuff like that. I don't normally ask for it, though. Uh in all reality, uh, the moment that I start asking for stuff like that is probably because I'm, I'm, I'm like going to start like running out of money. <laughs> so that the only time that I'll start asking for like, hey, make sure to donate to your artist, stuff like that, is if I start running out of money. Until I get to that point, I'm not going to be doing that. But I want to continue doing what I do for as long as I can. So if you guys consider buying my books, that's the best way to support me. That way you guys get something cool out of it as well. You guys can book me for private mentoring sessions. And you guys have to DM me for those because they'll book up pretty quickly. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I am looking currently. Currently I'm looking specifically for somebody. I need somebody to do art battles with. Like, I, I need someone that can give me a really good run for my money. When it comes down to drawing quickly and drawing live. So I am putting this out there. Anyone, like if you guys want to know what an art war is, an art battle is, it's essentially you send an ambassador. So let's say I have this little guy, right? I'm like, I'm ambassador for Rodgon. And then you go, I declare war. Ah. So you declare war on the person. And then that person has to kill your character. So let's say that like uh, they shoot him in the face. But they have to draw a character themselves using some sort of element to kill my dude. So this has to look like my guy in a way. Right? My dude has to be drawn and then they have to draw their character eliminating my character now their character can have any styling they want as a matter of fact this is this is how you win them you win them by making something so cool that they can't replicate enough or the person runs out of ideas on what to draw you know it's a kill shot because it's sideways So you end up drawing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until either one person does not know what to draw, they can't finish within the time limit, or the person just straight up gives up because it becomes incredibly uh, difficult with the extra detail that you add. So let's say this guy, right? So the next round would be this initial person having to kill this guy. So let's say that you draw like, I don't know, Godzilla stomping on him. Uh, and then you have to draw his gun because, you know, like, he just got squished. <laughs> so this can go back and forth infinitely. So now I have to kill something with this leg. So if you only included the leg, right? So now I, I have open... I have open creativity to choose whatever I want as on top of this leg. If I wanted this leg to be a sexy lady that had an elephantitis leg, I could do that. 
like, see what I mean? Like, you leave it up to interpretation of the person. But at the end of the day, whatever that is, I have to make sure that my thing, be it a uh, killer bunny or whatever, Right, whatever it is that you end up drawing, you have to make sure that that looks dope as hell. And I'm going to set a five minute limit. I've never set a five minute limit. Like I've never done one with that little of a a time frame. <laughs> but. I want to uh, do it live, and I want to see how far I can get against somebody that's uh, good at being imaginative too, right? Like, if they can be imaginative and they can draw quickly, oh, they're going to have so much, so much fun. I drew myself with a very sexy leg. But I want him. <laughs> Maybe he has boots. <laughs> he will wear, like, Godzilla boots. <laughs> you can only see a leg. No, it's a killer bunny. He just sliced the hell out of me and he took my eyeball. I'm not taking live. Stop asking. Uh, I'm just kind of getting annoyed. <laughs> but yeah, like that's essentially it. Like you just go ahead and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and at the end of the day, whoever reigns supreme is probably gonna have like a lot of blood on his skin. So whatever you end up choosing, make sure that you end up choosing wisely. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of dead characters. You guys can play it with your friends too. This is like a super fun like, like training exercise that I used to do in college. Right? I used to challenge people with this sort of stuff all the time. And this is how I got better. And it's friendly and it's fun and it's something you guys can do like just to pass the time at a coffee shop or whatever. It doesn't have to be... Our <laughs> <Five> wars. <laughs> so hey, that's yeah, that's something you guys can take and like have fun with. Ah, I think though, I think we're done for today. Ah, I think we are completed. I think we are done. I will challenge you, but you gotta give me a handicap. Nope, nope. There's no handicaps. My niece has to beat me in this. My niece, it's not about the art. The thing is, it's not about the art. It really isn't. Uh, it's about the conceptualization of the ideas. So you don't have to be a great artist. If I drew a bunny, you could draw a little stick figure like that. And that would be a representation of my bunny, as long as you have iconic features. And then whatever you decide to draw to kill my bunny can be anything in your imagination. Right? That's the beauty of art. The beauty of art is that it's so subjective that it doesn't matter. If you've ever played Pictionary, if you've ever, ever played Pictionary, you'll realize that the person that knows how to draw the best is probably going to be not the best partner to have because they see things very differently. Right? 
when they want to draw a bird, you would be like, oh, uh, okay, let's let's draw some, some wings, and we're gonna draw this, and I'm gonna draw a beak, and, and all that, that. Oh, but that looks like a, that looks like a canary. I need a more generic bird. So you'd be like that. A person would be like, ta da. What's that? <laughs> Pictionary is fun, but it's frustrating as hell for artists. <laughs> it's absolutely frustrating as hell because uh, we want to put our art skills to the test. Pictionary is not about putting your art skills to the test. It's about being able to pass on information and it teaches a lot of artists a lot of lessons <laughs> that uh, they don't really know that they need to know. AKA, it doesn't matter how good you are if you can't tell the story. Thank you, everybody. I think we are done for today. Uh, let's recap what we learned because we did actually a pretty fun stream today. Uh, we talked a little bit about the anatomy of our bodies. We started going into lips and we, we started talking about the mouth. So you can't talk about lips without explaining how the mouth works. So we talked about the mouth. I explained to you guys what you're actually drawing when you're doing this and how to simplify it really easy. How to see things in a way that lets you manipulate it easily and allows you to put it inside of any other shape. Understanding how that little teardrop happens at the front can give you access to a lot of facility and knowledge, okay? So remember that that is a very simple concept. It's just a little teardrop in the front, but you need to understand what the teardrop means. The teardrop means your teeth and your chin line. And if you draw your mouth around that, you end up with a really nice situation. I taught you guys how to draw chubbier characters. If you want to draw infinitely chubbier characters, there is ways to draw them infinitely big. Okay? It's all about overlapping your lines. Okay? So then what would you do? I taught you guys how to draw different stylings by just changing the size of that teardrop. That was really easy. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Then we went on to lips. Now that we understand how to draw mouths, I could explain to you guys how to draw lips. The mouth is a curvy line that intersects. The top line will always overlap, and then just draw your lips above that. If you have your lip line be a little bit different, that's fine. Intersect the bottom line as well. Give yourself the lips you want. The lines overlapping are what provide you the volume. The lines overlapping are what give you the spacing that you need. So it doesn't have to be complex at all. But if you want to add lips, you go from the edge and you taper it up to volume in the middle and then do same, the same thing with the bottom. But you start with the taper ends where it ends in the taper. You need to learn to overlap the lines, find the taper lines, and always make sure that the upper lip is overlapping a little. Cool? Even in three quarters, it's the same thing. Okay, you overlap it, taper it from those edges. Congratulations, you guys have leveled up a lot today. You guys have a lovely day. And uh, I'm going to start doing a, something a little bit different for YouTube. For YouTube, I'm going to start gathering the... I'm going to start gathering the videos for the explanations for my book. So on YouTube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole explanation of a body part. And we're going to use that as the videos for my how to draw book. So whenever I have my how to draw book, I'm going to have sections that explain different parts of the body. And I need to start making those if I want to finish it at some point ever. So what I'm going to do with YouTube is I'm going to start making those videos. So I'm going to start from nothing, from the very basics, which is just volume control and stuff like that. And then every day I'm going to make one or a couple lessons, but I'm going to sign off the stream every single time. 
So I'm going to see it like the coursework that's going to go alongside with my book. Simple videos, it'll be like simple, quick videos too. So it won't be super, super complex. Uh, but I have to start coming up with the formatting and stuff like that for that too. So if I don't start now, it's never going to get done. So I need to get it done at least to a certain extent today. But anyways, warm ups with Wes. Yep. Go, go, go warm up with Wes and then come to me, my peeps. Come to me, my friends, my drawing buddies, my uh, compadres in arms. Hope you guys learned a little bit today. I hope you guys learned a lot. And remember, before you... Hold on. I'm going to flip this. Uh, I'm going to have to make sure that... Here is your... I don't have a shirt on, but I promise I have pants on. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys. So, one, if you guys don't put any of this knowledge into work as soon as possible, right? If you guys do not, you guys will lose this knowledge. It will go away. So if you guys learned anything today, spend another 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's it. 15 minutes. And draw in your sketchbooks with what you guys learned today solidify that if you guys wanted to stay in there forever draw something cool with that knowledge and then you guys will have that forever all right shirtless rod uh signing off i promise i have pants guys i promise <laughs> you guys have a lovely day i'll see you guys next time and i'll see you guys later for youtube if you guys feel like uh coming on all right later gators